It is my great pleasure to be able to bring you some lockdown tips, strategies and ideas to be able to cope through these extraordinary times. My guest today is Mick Walsh, uh, and I've known Mick for a wee while now, and he is beaming in from Australia, and he is going to be, we're going to be talking and chatting today about uh, resilience and well-being, and uh, so welcome, Mick. Welcome, Karen. Thank you very much. Great to have you here. So let's kick off by you telling our viewers, please, a little bit about yourself, your background. Yeah, okay. I, when people ask me who I am, I just say, look, I've, I've been a teacher my whole life. And I'm very proud of that. Um, my wife and I have got three children, three sons who are teachers, and our three sons married teachers. So it's a bit of a genetic defect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's um, wonderful. Look, we just love seeing people, young people develop because they're 100% of our future, 100%. And so, look, I ended up being in the system. I'm still, I'm not in the system. I've been out writing books and helping schools all around Australia, you know, in 20 countries around the world, teach teachers about their own well-being. And once teachers are in a good space, we've, we've got an opportunity to get our children in good spaces. So, you know, I ended up being a principal. I did all that stuff. But I'm a teacher. Forget about me being a principal or a head of school. I'm a teacher. No. Nice. Okay, thank you. That's great. So tell us what resilience and well-being means to you. Why is it important? Yeah, it's really interesting. I I find that resilience, that's the most overused word in the, in the English language at the moment. I heard a regional director the other day, it, this lady used the word resilience seven times in 20 minutes. And I had lunch with her afterwards from a distance. And I said, what does resilience mean? Bounce back. I said, oh, yeah. But what qualities do you have to have to bounce back? Well, you just got to be resilient. So it's just re rhetorical, you know. Yeah. Uh, I, I, all everything, I, all the stuff I write and speak on, it's all backed up by good solid research, just like what you do, Karen. Mm -hmm. so, so what are some of those st strategies? Oh, or okay. like to have the capacity to bounce back. Firstly, you've got to have optimism and hope for the future. You've got to believe in your heart. And it's a bit like Carol's direct growth mindset a little bit. You've got to believe in your heart that you can influence your own future through your actions. Next one is controlling emotions. Now, that's not stopping you going, nah. no. What it is, is controlling negative mind chatter. So when you've got negative mind chatter and it starts to make you look for what's wrong, you've got to contest that and say, okay, well, I'm going to change the way I'm thinking to a more positive outlook. The second one, our third one is impulse control. And impulse control is just flying off the handle. I think the next one is the one that both you and I love, and it's flexibility of thought. I do a fair bit of work with uh, or help. I was doing it this morning in Tasmania, actually, on, online. Juvenile, kids in juvie. And the one thing we start with is teaching them how to change the way they think. And our beautiful friend, Art Costa, we take them through scenarios and just as students in school and teachers too. What are scenarios? Where would you use wonderment and all? What kind of scenario? So we explicitly teach people how to think. So that's the fourth one. Next one is empathy. And look, is there anything more important than relationships in the world, Karen? No, I think what teachers are really finding right now is that it's true so much. So when we're teaching online too, it's about the relationship you have with the child, not about the content, yes, absolutely. Well, and, it's, and, and you know the beautiful thing? It's a lot of it now is saying the content really doesn't matter. Yeah, you know, the content's just a vehicle to develop the thought processes that our children need to live a great world, you know, and live, live a great life. 
So empathy is a hard one, though, because some families, you know, the way their kids have grown up, the first step in social emotional intelligence is self regulation. Number two is self awareness. Number three is understanding others. Now, we've got a lot of young people and families that don't even understand themselves. Okay. So how can we expect them to show empathy for other people? So empathy is massive. You know, other people's needs and feelings. And the next one is self-belief. Right. So we're up to, this is number, uh, self-belief is number six. Thanks. And self-belief is really saying, I am enough. I'm, I'm a good enough person. I'm happy in my own skin. I've got a bent nose from too much footy and you know, crooked ears. I look a bit like Prince Charles. But uh, <laughs> He's a good looking handsome dude. <laughs> oh God, on a dark night. Um, <laughs> but it's it's just believing, you know, I get young people, you know, use a great there's a great app in these days, kids at home called Canva, C A N V A. I love Canva. I love Canva. And I get kids to make, um, and teachers, to make seven self-belief mantras. And this is for each week they put, each day they put a new one as a screensaver on their phone. So that just generates self-belief. And the last one, which is I think is the strongest one, is building social connectedness. So reaching out for help when you need it recognising, texting a friend in the morning, saying, look, I'm thinking of you, you know, you're struggling, you know, just just connecting with other people. And I think this situation at the moment we've got, we've got to be creative in building social connectedness. So they're the seven that constitute your ability to bounce back. There are people out there that say, oh, you just got to do this, this and this. In a world where people like simple, people go hook, line and sinker. But the reality is it's just not true. Yes, it takes a lot more work and you have to actually, and it takes time, doesn't it? So it takes oh. time to learn these things and it takes <clears throat> uh, and practice, that self-awareness and that practice and getting it wrong and then trying again and getting better at what we do. Absolutely. And it was funny this morning when I was talking with the group in Tasmania and these are kids from just generational, they've never had anyone in their family that's got anywhere. And it's really interesting that as soon, you know, they've, they've all fixed mindset. But some of their fixed mindset is that I'm not even going to try this because I might look bad. Yeah, you know, fixed mindset people aren't lazy. All they do is they just don't want to try things that might not you know, make them look good. So I think that, I think it does take time. And, you know, and as Ericsson, as you'd know really well, you know, feedback, 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 and as many mistakes as you can. You know, it's... Everything is hard before it is easy. And so, look, it's hard when you're learning your skill. It's hard to uh, change your habits. It's hard to learn to have empathy when you haven't done it before. It's hard to... Uh, learn to love yourself and uh, have that uh, self-worth within you. But the more you practice and the more you do get that feedback, the easier it becomes. And so, you're so right. And, and the thing is, both New Zealand and Australia, we've got this thing about loving ourselves. Like we had a guy over here named Greg Norman, who was the, one of the greatest golfers behind Tiger Woods, you know. He, the tall poppy syndrome over here is, I'm not going to talk about him. You know, I think I hate going to funerals, not because the person died, because they celebrate the person's life after they're dead. Why not celebrate them while they're alive? So deliberate practice is massive, yeah, yeah. So that's what resilience is, those seven things. And as teachers, I'd be aiming, and as parents, aim to cultivate one at a time. <laughs> Absolutely. I often say to teachers, uh, particularly when they're looking at Art Costa's work and there are 16 habits, uh, yeah. and even with your seven ideas, uh, they say, oh, but there's so many. I'm saying it's not just the year you have them, it's the whole journey 
right? Oh. And so what are you doing in that whole journey? And even my own daughter, she turned 18 yesterday. So unfortunately, I wasn't there for her 18th, but we had an online celebration. And when I go yeah. home next week, we'll do something. But uh, I've been saying to her, not quite for 18 years, but I've been saying to her, when you get to 18, my job is done. You have to be able to parent yourself. You know, you need to be able to put yourself to bed. You need to be able to manage your uh, social media uh, usage. You need to be able to, you know, it doesn't mean I'm not going to be there, but it does mean that, you know, at 18, she, she's able to vote, she's able to drink, she's able to do all these things that I have no control over now. And so uh, it, it, it's that journey. And so I say to schools, you haven't got the one year you've got them, you've got the six years you've got them, or if it's a, a longer process, you've got 12 years. Yeah. And yeah, and yeah, look, I mean, your daughter, Miss 18, I'll notice how you New Zealanders call Miss 18, Miss 17, right? <laughs> Miss 18, I've, I know a lot about Miss 18. I've watched her exploits on Facebook with you. You're so proud of it. Um, yeah, I think that's just the thing. We're in an instant world, a world of instant gratification. Everything has to happen now. And, uh, yeah, look, my mum's 89 and I've, I've come from a really big family. And guess what? Mum is still being a mother to some of my brothers, let me tell you. So. <laughs> my father says, oh, they leave home, but they never leave home. <laughs> that's it. Well, look, actually... Yeah, mum's been really supporting Lynn and I because we've been corralled for a month and so we ring mum up in the night and say, how you going, love? But it's really just to see her face and so it's as good for us as it is for her. Absolutely. Yeah, so but, I, but that's a whole school thing. You know that one-year journey? Yes. That's where the mentality of the staff, and this is why I do staff wellbeing days, Karen, not student ones. My job is to get a belief amongst the staff of what they want for themselves and what they want for their kids. So and what are what, some of your top tips for the teachers to be able to have that resilience and well-being for themselves? Oh, firstly, I think encourage your kids to make, make a cake at home with mum. My wife, Lynn, has been cooking and little Charlie who's seven and Belsey, the grandkids, two of them, who's five. They've been doing this and doing this. And this morning it was rather embarrassing. Lingo, Lynn went for a walk early and the kids come out to our caravan for breakfast every morning, quarter past six in the morning. So Charlie makes scrambled eggs. He said, I said, oh, I'll make them for you in the microwave, Charlie. He said, no grumps. I'm called Grump, right? It's Grumps and Granny. I'll make them outside. So he went, I said, what do you mean? The induction cooker. Seven years of age. He's got the induction cooker out, the proper fry pan. I said, I'll break the eggs. No, no grumps. He, did, he made the whole lot. I didn't even know how to turn the induction cooker on. <laughs> so... I think those things, and I read with interest with after the Christ, Christchurch earthquakes, a lot of your kids, when they're away, away from school, came back bigger, bigger and better because they learnt some wonderful other skills of life that I think we overestimate. I mean, look, this year in Australia, we've cancelled NAPLAN. That's Yay. literally... Right, yes. Anyway, I guarantee, besides our wonderful teachers have had this weight off their shoulders, I guarantee this year, kids' literacy and numeracy will improve. Because I hope, true. I hope we can really see the statistics of that, that teachers aren't teaching to the test and they're not teaching to the, you know, to make sure children can uh, appear good but they actually just do the real teaching and the real personalisation and, uh, and the yeah. kids having real experiences. Yeah, and forget about the curriculum so much. Just, just teach the intent, the process. Like, I mean, this morning, you know, when I was doing this, this interview, Charlie was doing something, but it was a process he was following, and I'm, I'm just mesmerised. Where did you learn that? 
He said, Grumps, do you remember when you got the caravan off the back and you did this and you did that? Just process. The one big tip I've got for teachers, and kids don't care what you know till they know you care. And if you're going to do this face-to-face stuff, they're going to pick you that easily. So mirror neurons aren't about copying gestures. Yes. Mirror neurons is copying intent. So when you just before you sit down at the screen with your kids, whether you're Zooming or WhatsApping or Skyping, say, it's an absolute privilege for me today to work with these young people. Absolute privilege. And they're going to know that I'm kind and generous. They're going to know I'm forgiving. And I want, to ask, I want them to ask me as many questions as possible and we're going to have a ball. Forget about the content. Just get them being human beings and, you know. And I, have- I love that, Mick. I love that it's mirroring the intent because uh, that's what they will pick up, particularly over a screen, because uh, they don't get the full body language. They're not getting the full... Uh, uh, the, the, the feeling from uh, you know the warm body feeling, but they will get your intent. And so, what a lovely yeah. thing! Thank you. Yeah, well, you know, look, our with our heart has got an electromagnetic field that goes out about six feet around us. You know, you can feel when other people care. Mm. You can also feel when other people don't care. Correct. So, you know, kids smile that much. We've got to practice it too. Are you still there, Karen? Yeah? Yeah. So I, I'd, I'd be getting the kids, hey, look, can you find something in the garage and uh, paint a chair? Or can you go outside and count how many different types of plants there are? Yeah, just get out in the fresh air and what you learn, you will learn more in this time away than I'll learn. But, so tell teachers, just relax. And get kids doing. Get them to make word searches. How good? How good a word search? Little Charlie and I the other day. I said, "What you wrote down all the sports you knew?" We got to eighteen. I was, I was amazed. <laughs> so we made a word search. Then we spent the next two hours trying to find every word. <laughs> but then he learned strategy. He learned strategy. So he learned, okay. A, Word like rugby, what's an unusual letter? Probably G or oh, Y. So you look for all the Ys to, and he found rugby real quick. So what did he learn out of that? How, what a wonderful skill he's picked up. Absolutely. And those, strat- those little strategies that they pick up when they are learning, uh, that they can then apply to a different situation. Yeah, so... If, if there are any of you teachers listening who are line and length and you follow all the compliance stuff that the department puts out, whoop. Compliance things, frameworks, in, they have never helped a teacher standing in front of 25 kids. Hey, show your heart. Now, that's hard because you're going to show vulnerability. It takes a lot of courage to be kind. And just show who you are as a person and ask them, what have you, what have you been doing? What have you been up to? I think that's powerful. Absolutely. It is very, very powerful just to be able to uh, be yourself. And I know a lot of teachers have been a bit concerned with having to make videos and uh, make them over and over again, trying to make them perfect. But you're not perfect in the classroom. And it's about being human. And giving it a go, trying new things, and the kids really will respect that and learn from it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Kids, kids don't care what you know till they know you care. And the second saying is, you can't teach them till you reach them. So if they just if they go, oh, here's this, here's this bloke again, you know, you want them to really want to be looking forward to with optimism. Remember that word, optimism. To say I'm looking forward to. Uh, Miss Boy's lesson today, I can't wait. She'll be doing something funny and I'll get a, have a good time and learn a bit. I, I was interviewing Helen Mack on uh, uh, Tuesday uh, and having a chat with her and she, she's an optimism specialist and she gave <clears> a wonderful uh, 
broke down the word optimism, meaning opt, meaning you're looking for, or you're opting in, or you're choosing, sorry, you're choosing. And the second part of the word is that you're looking for it. So you're choosing to look for the good. And uh, that's part Brilliant. of what optimism means and I just love that she, she was able to unpack it with the, like the Greek or the Latin I can't remember which one Latin I yeah, think yeah. Um, but it was lovely Nick um, what what sort of tips do you think teachers could be using for themselves right now because we've got yeah. teachers who are um, at home right now teaching online they are teaching uh, their own children they're trying to keep their families going what sort of personal well-being tips or resilience tips uh, for teachers who are feeling very stressed right now uh, could you maybe offer? Yeah. Look, first one is, you know, there's a lovely uh, book called Third Space that Adam Fraser put together, and, and he wrote it on the back of Ray Oldenburg's uh, research from the late 80s. Um, you know, can't hop in your car, but find a space where you can just relax. Just, you know, here's one here, your phone. You go, boom, boom, go through your, spin your contacts. This is one I do when I'm in a traffic jam. Spin your contacts, and when it stops, just press ring. Wow. I mean, what happens, people, uh, they go, oh, how are you, Mick? How are you going? I say, who am I talking to? And they say, uh, positive emotions, this is for teachers, for all of us. Our positive emotions is the greatest influence on our well-being. Do little things for positives and have a space. It could be doing a flower bed outside. Now, one of our sons, Danny, he's a um, school leader down in South of Victoria. As soon as he does his conference, he does 15 minutes with the kids, he's outside playing with his little one. Then he comes back in, does a bit more time out there with his, that's his third space. And we did FaceTime with him this morning and all those beautiful kids. And you could see he was he, he was enjoying it, but he was the response his kids are giving, these students, magnificent. I think the other one too is that lay off the booze. That's not going to help. Exercise as much as you can. I think exercise. It just makes you more positive, you know, broaden and build. You know, you just see more, more oxygen. I think that's a big one, actually, because one of the things I've noticed, and I heard a teacher yesterday say she'd had seven Zoom meetings yesterday, and, you know, one of the things I've noticed is that I'm not getting up as much because I'm sitting at my computer all day, not which terrible. is actually really draining. And so being really mindful to get up and move and maybe uh, when I interviewed Rowie last week, she talked about four puffs an hour. Uh, yeah. And um, you're getting puffed four times for 10 seconds an hour. But whatever it is, but to be able to keep moving and, and take those tiny little micro breaks. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, well, Josh's wife, so I'm in their office now. She's got a stand-up office. Stand-up desk? Stand-up desk. Yeah. And she's there and she'll be as walking on a treadmill, or it's amazing. And, you know, for me, I get on those feet vibration things, and then every 40 minutes I get up and do the ropes, you know, those Michelle Bridges things. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, 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 I'm a big fan of it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I go for a long walk every day. But one thing, there's schools that have gone over the top on these zooms. Uh, you're, you're just like NAPLAN people. I don't, I'm, I'm constructively disruptive, everyone. I think if you overdo it, you're just going to lose lose your teachers. And teachers, I just want to say, are mighty, doing a mighty job, but don't kill them because you're going to kill a love of learning in children. You so kill the love of teaching and you'll kill the love of learning for the children. So, yeah, it's lovely. Yeah. Thing, yeah. Yeah, that's another tip. And I wouldn't be too stri- I wouldn't be too strategic in what I do. Just make it fun. Positive emotions are going to get all of us through this. And caring. That caring and being um, just being real. Thank you. Yeah, go on. What about for parents uh, who are stuck at home again, trying to work 
uh, with uh, they're trying to do their work from home. They're trying to have their kids uh, at home as well doing their school work. I saw a, a, a meme yesterday that said uh, a child sitting on the couch with a mother going, am I adopted? And the mother said, no, dear, I've only just put the advert in the paper. <laughs> Actually, in Australia, we've, we've had a number of companies that have been called out. They've said to their employees, we don't want you to work at home because you won't get any, there'll be no productivity because you'll be with your kids. Now, I think that's a sad indictment of uh, what they value, you know, with their employees. But I, I, for parents, well, did we feel so strongly about it in Stuff I Write? We've created a new website just for parents. So the, the big whopping website and journals that we just deal traditionally with schools, we've adapted it just for parents. And I think you know, you're in the game, I'm in the game, and when we bring up our kids, like Miss Aideen and our boys, we kind of knew all the stuff that was important in bringing kids up. That's why you fly around the world doing what you're doing and that's why I do. And But most parents don't. So uh, we've just created things where there's a whole lot of activities where kids do, it's student-driven. And once you get them doing, well, we've got to simulate kids playing out in the playground. Mm. We've got to simulate smiling. We've just, you know, four positives to one neg. But, four positives, so you're saying four positive things to every negative thing you say. Well, that's a, Barb Fredrickson's research is a bit, positive emotions are the greatest influence on building well-being. Okay. And she advocates about four to one. Now, you know, the Western world we live in functions on two to one. So that's not good. That's not good. Are you saying two negatives to one positive? No, two positives to no, one negative. Well, but I would have thought the norm was more negatives than positives. Oh, look, you meet a few sad bags, Karen, you know that. But yeah. I, find the, I find the majority of people are fantastic. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's good. Uh, I've heard, though, that children hear more no's than they hear yeses. Oh, isn't that terrible? Yeah. <laughs> no, you can't. No, don't touch. No, don't. No, no, no. So that's where I was coming from. Uh, so tell me, tell us about your journals because uh, a lot of people won't know and understand what uh, you put together. Well, a lot of New Zealand schools use them. Um, look, this is so for parents. Here's an opportunity. Like, here's one for the little kids. Here's an example, and it's got activities in it. They're all researched, and they're just. So alluring. The kids start and they just get into them. You know, and they look, they're, they're all for the different age groups, you know, and I can go through it. And, oh my God. We can put a link below for people who want to check them out and find out. Okay, well, we can do that. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we started a thing called um, This is for Parents, Just for Parents, um, Learning Curve at Home. Dot com and people go in it's it's put as cheap as chips but it's just an opportunity for parents to make sure the teachers are doing the academic stuff we need our kids to do the social emotional stuff too and that's what we're trying to do help that and so your work is really around that social emotional making sure the children are grounded that they've got those good uh resilient factors that we're teaching those ideas that you the seven ideas you talked about at the start so that uh they can then do that's the the, the groundwork so they can then put the academic work yeah well they'll do that better i'll do it well i mean I'll, I'll, I'll do it with a quote howard gardner now Hart, you know howard very well from multiple intelligences howard spent his whole life being interested in just creative, intelligence, critical, and synthesizing. Well, he's put out two in a book called Five Minds, great read. He put out two more, he said, a more important intelligence is ethical and respectful. And I start keynotes with his quote, and this is it. And this, will, this is me. This will sum me up 100%. He 
He says, I have nothing against excellence, but at the end of the day, the world doesn't need any more of the brightest and the best, but more of those of good character. What I try and do in what I do, I've got a whole lot of stuff like you on academic, but I think we need more good people in this world, Karen. And that's what I'm endeavouring. I'm optimistic that I can influence that. Yeah, I think, and I think um, that goes back to your uh, mirror neurons and the intention. If we are good people, if we use manners and we are on time and we respect others and we uh, lift people, other people up, then we are that uh, mirror or that um, that light that other people will uh, guide to. Uh, aspire. aspire to. Yes, one of the challenges I see sometimes is we want everyone else to be like that. Oh, I wish they would. I wish they could. I wish. But actually, uh, I have a, a great friend who used to say to me, close your eyes. There's nothing out there. And it's a wonderful reminder for me that uh, everything is a reflection of who I am. And so who do I need to be? Who do uh, who we all need to be to be the best that we can be and therefore influence the world in whatever way that is? So. I think, yeah, look, there's a beautiful Yiddish proverb that said, if you want to be like him, who's going to be like you? So <laughs> I, I, use the, that. I use the analogy of the people that want to act like, look like, sound like, be like someone else. Well, they're pigeons. You know, every pigeon goes, huh, huh, and they all go, huh, huh. And one pigeon poops, they all poop. One takes off, they all take off. I prefer to be an eagle. Mm. You don't find eagles in flocks. They stand tall and they're happy. They say, I am enough. I am enough. And, and you know, the way we build enough and a belief in enough is through habits, and but it's through doing. To become, we have to do. Not talk about it. We have to do. So that's why I put together these things and the parent. And ongoing, Karen, I think the new normal, and I, we really hope, is that parents are going to feel more empowered to take more interest and ownership in their children's uh, social-emotional development. You know, like iPads, edutainment, edutainment. And I think a lot of parents, because they've been so busy, sit their kids on the couch, give them an iPad, occupy them. Uh, I think that's terrible parenting. I don't mind saying it. Play with your kids. And the thing that's happening now, Charlie's driving me crazy playing. Lynn's cooking all day. And Josh and Soph, the parents, they're loving it because... <laughs> I'm from granddad. <laughs> yeah, 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 but I, I, grumps, thank you, grumps, thank you. Sorry, built and grumps. <laughs> yeah, so we teachers and pe we parents play with your kids. If you want to have a look at our stuff, that's fine. If you want to contact me, that's fine. I'd love to talk to you. I'll but put all the information down in the link. Thank you so much, Mick. It's wonderful to connect with you. Uh, the power of incredible technology uh, that you can be in a completely different country and we can be having a chat. Isn't that amazing? And uh, so thank you so much. So uh, next week on Tuesday at four o'clock New Zealand time, I have the amazing Caitlin Tucker. Now, Caitlin is from the USA mm -hmm. and I met her in Africa in November and she is an absolute world expert on blended learning. And I mm -hmm. thought it was a really good time for uh, our viewers to be able to uh, hear her speak because as our teachers go back to school next week uh, in New Zealand, and as you will start having to be a very blended model with some of your children at the school, some of your children still at home, and you're still doing both kinds of teaching, uh, she's going to provide some wonderful practical strategies that you'll be able to put into place when you are back at school next week. So that's 4 o'clock New Zealand time next Tuesday. So thank you again, Mick. Thank you for your time and your uh, wonderful inspiration and ideas. And for all our viewers out there, please stay safe and keep learning.